Today's buyers are longing to leave suburban living for the slice of country life they've always dreamt of. We may have struck lucky with our properties. I love this house. <laughs> I love it. And their vision might be closer than they imagined. It's lovely. Supposing the whole family in here gather around the table. Yeah. Today I'm in Suffolk and behind me is the village of Thorpe Ness. Now built in the early part of the 20th century, it was the brainchild of eccentric Scottish barrister Glen Cairn Stuart Ogilvy. Now, he was passionate about Tudor and Jacobean architecture and he wanted to create a holiday village that in his view harked back to the days of quintessential England. But there was a problem, a ginormous water tower that overlooked the entire village. In Ogilvy's view, it wasn't in keeping with the rest of the houses, so he wanted to make it so. And what you see today are the result of his modifications. The tower has been ingeniously disguised as a clapperboard house, complete with windows, a pitch roof, it's even got a chimney stack. Today though, the village no longer requires the water tower, but you'll be pleased to hear it's been converted into a luxury home and stands tall testament to the unique vision of Ogilvy himself. The East Anglian County of Suffolk is bordered by Norfolk to the north, Essex to the south and Cambridgeshire to the west. Looking out over the North Sea, the Suffolk Heritage Coast stretches 50 miles from Felixstowe in the south to Lowestoft in the north. Along the way, the ever popular seaside town of Southwold is recognised for its stunning Georgian architecture and multi-coloured beach huts. The pier, originally built in 1900, was completely refurbished in 2001 and offers some wonderful views back towards the town. Moving inland towards the heart of the county, the cluster of historic Suffolk wool towns and villages date back as far as the 15th century, when the textile trade was big business here. To the south of the county, Dedham Vale has some of the country's most serene and stunning landscapes, which were immortalised by 19th century artist John Constable. Some of his most celebrated works, such as the Haywain and Flatford Mill, were painted in the countryside around the nearby village of East Bergholt, where he lived. With a wealth of period properties and beautiful surrounding countryside, you'd think that would be reflected in Suffolk's property values. Yet the average cost of a detached house here at the moment is just under £278,000, which is around £16,000 below the national figure, which I think represents pretty good value. But be warned, toward the south of the county, where properties are closer to road and rail links back into London, prices do begin to climb. So whereabouts in the county are today's buyers looking? Let's meet them and find out. Laura met New Zealander Matt seven years ago at a bar in London whilst he was backpacking around the UK. She convinced him to settle with her here and they bought a home in Stevenage, Hertfordshire. I would describe Matt as a typical Kiwi. He's very outdoorsy and friendly and easy to get along with. Things have changed substantially since I arrived in the UK. Um, now I've got a wonderful wife and, and two fantastic children. And um, I couldn't ask for anything more, really. Aww. Having lived in Stevenage now for two years, Laura and Matt are finding that as their daughters Sophie, three, and Elizabeth, two, get bigger, their house is beginning to feel smaller, and the location also no longer suits their needs. Currently we live in uh, quite close to a town, and um, it can be quite busy and quite crowded. I'd like to give the kids some space, some freedom, some the ability to be curious and, and, and just, just explore things by themselves without having to be too controlled by us. It would be nice to be able to look out of the window and see fields and to have that feeling of space. And you were quite happy living here until you found out that you weren't the only Kiwi in the village. <laughs> 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 Whilst police officer Laura is currently on a career break, staying at home to bring up the children, now is the right time for them to make a move before the girls start school. We're hoping to escape to Suffolk. We've been over there a couple of times. Some beautiful countryside and beautiful houses and beautiful little villages that we could really see ourselves settling into and becoming part of the community. Um, nice little cosy pubs in the winter and um, lots of sheep primarily. <laughs> <laughs> Which is not why I'm attracted to Suffolk at all. But yeah, we would like to get some land to, um, that, we, that we potentially could keep some sheep on um, in the longer term. Um, just, to, just to give our girls a sort of a rural upbringing. Matt grew up in the New Zealand countryside close to the sea. 
and they're keen for the girls to experience the same kind of childhood he enjoyed. Suffolk's got a long coastline and um, I'd really like to teach the girls how to sail, like I was taught when I was younger. And I'd like to learn how to sail as well. Committed to making the move to Suffolk work, Matt would like the property to be no more than a 15 minute drive from the nearest railway station so he can still commute to his risk management job in London. I'm fully prepared for the commute to take a bit longer. as It's a, a trade-off with, uh, with lifestyle. And with rolling fields and sea air on the horizon, Laura and Matt can't wait to immerse themselves in country life and begin their search for their dream home. I'm primarily looking forward to the, the, the peace and quiet. Um, the kids have been able to make as much noise as they want to without annoying any neighbours. Um, and just, just having the freedom to, to do what we want when we, whenever we want to. Having visited Suffolk only a handful of times, Laura and Matt are open to living anywhere in the county, so this gives us great scope for our property search. I'm meeting up with them to pinpoint exactly what they're after in terms of their new home and new life in the countryside. So welcome both of you to a bright but blustery Suffolk. Good to be out in the countryside? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Why have you chosen stuff like that? We were looking to move back to New Zealand at some stage. and um, That's called Escape the Country. Escape the Country, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Suffolk is quite similar to New Zealand in terms of the countryside. And this is sort of a compromise between the two. Well, you're still working, so it needs to be commutable. Well, I've spoken to a few people at, at my work that do commute from Suffolk. Yeah. Um, I've had a look at the Sudbury commute as well, and that, yeah. that seems quite reasonable. Now, schools, they've got to be a factor coming up, haven't they? That's a key aspect of the... The property search for us is, is the schools available for the children. So let's talk about the house itself and its environment. You're from New Zealand, so I imagine you want to be in the mm. middle of nowhere. <laughs> well, this is where we compromise again. I yes. would rather be um, in the middle of a village. Yeah. Matt would rather be in the middle of nowhere. So I think somewhere <laughs> in between that would be ideal. What does it look like then, this dream countryside property <laughs> then, Laura? Um, ideally, four bedrooms mm -hmm. at least. Um, an annex would be nice. Especially if we have people stay from New Zealand that are over here for extended periods of no, time. No, that makes perfect yeah. sense. Yeah, like your folks, of course. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, style-wise, have you got anything you both like? We've looked at barn conversions, we've looked at Victorian properties. We would prefer something with a bit of character. Yes. Now outside, do you want a big garden? Yes. How big? Well, Matt. Huge, huge. <laughs> <laughs> Why did I Matt even ask like, that question? <laughs> Matt would like five acres and I'm a bit more realistic. Good. I'll go with your answer then, Laura. Let's talk about budget because I understand you've got two options, haven't you? We have. We have a property in Stevenage at the moment and yep. we'd, we'd quite like to keep that right. and rent it out. Or selling it would, would increase the budget somewhat over here. So if you keep your property in Stevenage, mm. how much would you be able to spend here? I think 450 is 450 realistic. To Okay, and if you sell your property in Stevenage? 550 to 650. Okay. So how about then, we look around 450-ish, mm -hmm. option one, and 550-ish, maybe squeezing a bit more out of it, for option number two. Yes. Sounds a good plan. That's great. Let's get going. Thanks Lovely, fantastic. thanks. Having a budget in the region of 450 and 550,000 pounds, Laura and Matt are looking for a four-bed detached property with lots of space for their growing girls to explore and enough land to appreciate rural living, but also not too far from a local village. We've got some gorgeous properties lined up which reflect the bountiful architectural heritage of Suffolk that Laura and Matt love, combined with the space they're longing for. At the end of the house tours, I'll be asking them to estimate the price of each. Our final stop will be the Mystery House, which provides an alternative option and may make them reconsider elements of their wish list. Our house hunt begins in the hamlet of Creeting St Peter. Nearby is the town of Needham Market, which initially grew up around the wool combing industry and where there's a butcher, a baker, a post office and two pubs. The property we're going to visit is two and a half miles from this thriving community and a five minute drive to a local primary school for Laura and Matt's girls. Now someone here mentioned they like the idea of a barn conversion. Mm. There you go. There we okay. are. Fantastic. Interesting. All of this timber clad right. building is yours. Right. From the two story building all the way along here. Yes. And living accommodation 
ends right there at the carport. It's quite extensive, isn't it? Mm. I think it looks quite small from the outside, but I think it's going to be actually be quite big. Now, can you hear that? That's the train that takes you into London really? in one hour, 26 minutes. Oh, okay. The station's less than a couple of miles away. Oh, really? That's Stowe Market. Yeah. The convenience of the train is, is quite appealing. Mm. Inside, this could be the house that you've fallen in love with. Yes. Really, really, really could be. Let's go and find out. Okay. Stylishly converted 12 years ago, this Grade 2 listed barn has foundations which date back to 1753 and sits within a development of eight dwellings. Righto, first off, I want to point out you've got a utility room just there. Brilliant. Big tick for you, isn't it? Yes. Laura. Now, kitchen. Ah. Oh. Well, that's nice. I like the kitchen. It's yeah. The island in the middle. Now, I've spent some money on this house. Right. Especially in the kitchen, you can see it. Shop blasted granite worktops, state of the art cookers, and. You yeah, know. pretty contemporary, yet still quite country at the same time. Yeah. And then if you look through those double doorways, you've got a really good sized dining room. Yes. Yeah, I'm liking it. Through that door that way, mm -hmm. you've got a living room. Mm -hmm. And an ensuite double bedroom. Okay. Right? Right. That's almost like an annex. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you can go and dis discover that later on. But I just want you to know that is there whilst we walk through the rest of the house. Okay. okay. Come with me. Now, I really like this room. Oh, I yeah. think you will too. That's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. It's a good size, isn't it? Mm, a really nice room. You like the inside of this house. I do. Don't you? I really do. And because of that, the outside is growing on me too. Good, good, good. Well, it's all about the package, isn't it? Of course it is. Mm. Let's keep looking around. Let me take you to one of the bedrooms. Mm -hmm. so I yes. think you'll like those as well. Yeah. Due to the unique layout of this barn conversion, on the ground floor, there are two double bedrooms and two bathrooms located at either end of the property. On the first floor, there are a further three double bedrooms, one currently used as a library, one as a study, and two more bathrooms. Obviously, this is your master, mm -hmm. ensuite. Yeah. I think you can get all your family this end of the house. Yeah. Yes. It's lovely. Definitely. I love the timber. Hmm. And what we love about it is that it's so separated from the kitchen dining room. Yeah. So if you've got friends over and you're having a party and it's a little bit noisy, um, it's not going to disturb a little one sleeping, no, good idea. Yeah, all right. Yeah. So I'm getting downstairs, there's a double bedroom. Yep. Yes. Great for visiting relatives. Really, really feel at home here, do you? Yeah, I could see myself living here. I think, I think the layout would suit us really well. Yeah. Well, so you, you spied that other bit of garden from the living room. Let's go out there mm -hmm. yes. and also maybe start thinking about the price. Since viewing the inside of the barn, the property seems to have grown on Laura especially. But let's see if the landscape garden here of half an acre lives up to expectation too. This is a really handy bit of garden space here, isn't it? Absolutely, yes. yeah. Yeah, I really like this. A little bit overgrown at the moment, but um, you can really do something with this space. Mm, definitely. Yeah, nice views of the countryside here. Compare your thoughts or reactions now to your first reactions when you stood the other side of that building. Yeah, well, I was a bit disappointed when we first saw the garden, yeah. but actually I've walked around the house and... I've come out here and there's a lot more garden out here and yeah. it's beautiful and you just keep finding more and more house don't you and more and more <laughs> garden so it's um yeah it's, it's it... quite surprising okay then well your next problem is to guess the price of this house well um I definitely think it's the top end of our top budget okay but um I don't think you'd be so mean as to show us somewhere that I would fall in love with that we couldn't afford so I would say 600,000 okay I'm going to go slightly lower. I think 580,000. Good guess. You'll be pleased here. This place on the market offers around 575,000 pounds. Wow. Wow. That's good, isn't it? That's, That's surprising. Really yeah. I was being optimistic with my 580. That's really doable. Yeah. I like that. Something to think about? Yes. Good package then, isn't it, really? Yeah. yeah. Impressed. I, I love this house. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> well, I love hearing that. Now look, I think you should go back into the house, have a look at all your rooms you haven't yet seen, mm. maybe the guest suite, the guest wing, shall we call it, the other side of the kitchen, and I'll meet you outside whenever you're done. All right? Okay. Great. See you in a moment. Thank you. Thank you.
Well, this house has really grown on both Laura and Matt. And I think a lot of that is, of course, the size of the accommodation, but it's been really well done. At the very top end of their budget, this stunning barn conversion with four bedrooms and contemporary kitchen offers the perfect solution for separate guest accommodation. So there's plenty of room for Laura and Matt to play with. Space is what we were after, and um, this, this place definitely delivers that. Walking around the house, the rooms are all lovely, it's beautifully decorated. Wow. Well, this would make a fantastic guest room, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, oh, very impressive. I love the style. This place has been done uh, very tastefully. Another bathroom. Oh, wow. Brilliant. Possibly where this house falls short is on the outside space for me. If we were to buy this house, because it is um, at the top end of our budget, we would have to sell our house in Stevenage. But I think for a house like this, that would be something I'd be willing to do. So tell me, guys, what was it like spending some time in this house on your own? Did it grow on you even more? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. yeah it's, I really um... like this house. Are you surprised on how you've almost turned a corner? I know you certainly look quite nice, but you were uncertain about the area, but you really seem to have warmed to it. I have. It's, um, yeah, the inside is just fabulous. Mm. Mm. Mm, I have too. I liked it to start with, but yeah. um, seeing the inside is, just makes it even more. Well, hopefully it's yeah. something to sleep on now, isn't it? Yes. Let's go. Think of that. The Suffolk countryside is home to extensive views and an undulating terrain. And below this surface lies land rich in clay. In Bulmer, on the Suffolk-Essex border, there's a site dating back to the Middle Ages where clay is still being used today to make decorative terracotta plaques in the style of the past. We've sent Laura and Matt, who are keen to find out about the local area and traditions, to meet tile and brickmaker Peter Minter, whose family have been running this brickyard since 1936. Good morning. Hello. Nice to meet you. Nice Hi. to meet you. Good morning. Hi. Nice, nice to, meet to meet you. you. Jolly good. Yeah. So, Peter, is the clay local clay? We're sitting on a clay seam. This is the north edge of the Thames estuary, would you believe? Okay. And, and this was all the silts in that estuary. And it's a very, very clean, fine clay. Right. And that's perfect for making a whole range of things. Sure. What are we going to do today? Well, I think we'll make some plaques. These are plaques. This is a carving of a traditional Tudor rose from the time of the Wars of the Roses. Uh, and this is a little stylized rose. And they're carved in wood in reverse and then moulded. And we shall see that process. Peter makes all the plaques using traditional moulds made out of mahogany, which enable them to retain their shape. Rescued by Peter's father after the Second World War, the mould we're using today is one of many set to be burned before he brought them back into use. We've now come into the making show to try to make a decorative plaque for you. So this has been sanded, ready to throw the clay in, and we're going to roll the clay in sand rather as you would use flour with dough, mm -hmm. so that the two will come apart. And if you have a look here, here's the start of rolling what is called a warp, which is the shape that's going to go in there. So we use a little bit of sand just literally to, to roll it in, and you can roll that like that, and you get each corner just slightly rolled, and then it will go into that box, we hope, as one piece. So if you'd like to have sure. a go. That's it. That's lovely. <laughs> and then if you punch from the centre, push it in, you're going to push it into each corner with your fist. That's it. It's really good fun. And then just fold it in slightly from the edges, that's perfect. Then we, we bow off the surplus clay. So just like that? That's it, just press down and draw along. Lovely. <laughs> and then roll that back. That's it. Take that. That's the start of the next brick. And then we take a, a, a metal, we call it a strike, which can just put a little bit of water on there as well. And then you can just smooth that off with that rod. Draw it right along the top there. That's perfect. This has got to go onto a board when you turn it out. So we put a little sand on there, just like a flower again. So the next thing is to pick it up. That's it. That's lovely, perfect. You've got a job. <laughs> Pick up a board, lay it on top, turn it over, a bit of luck it should yeah. 
hopefully come out. Grand. Just give a little wiggle. <laughs> Slowly, don't, not too much, just straight up. <laughs> I'm so bossy. <laughs> oh, wow. How about that? Fantastic. <laughs> so now we're going to put this to dry, and during the drying process it will shrink. Once the plaques are out of the moulds, they need to dry out for around three to four weeks before they can be fired in a coal-burning downdraft kiln. This is the kiln. Why do you dry the plaques out before you put them in the kiln? If you've got moisture present, when it heats up, it would turn to steam and the whole thing would disintegrate. And you leave it that way for three days? Three days, yeah. Firing and three days cooling. Okay. So in about a couple of months' time, your plaque should be ready. Fantastic. Lovely, thank you. It's very nice to meet you and, and, and thank you very much for coming. No, thank, thank, you. thank you for a fantastic day. Right. Jolly good. Very interesting. Very nice indeed. Thank Jolly you, good. it's thank been you. lovely. Bye-bye. It's the second day of our property search in Suffolk, with Laura and Matt from Stevenage in Hertfordshire, who have a budget of between £450,000 and £550,000. They're ready to leave busy suburbia behind and enjoy the space and freedom country living can provide for their growing family. Coming up, they're blown away by what's on offer. Every time you turn a corner on this place, it just gets better, doesn't it? Just space. And I take to the water in search of one of Suffolk's finest delicacies. Wow! That must be 20 years old. What are you going to do with that? Well, we'll use it for oyster soup. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Well, I think it's fair to say that Matt and Laura rather like barn conversions, so we're going to stick with that theme with the first house we're looking at today. Then, we're off to the Mystery House. And although the Mystery House is the most rural of all the locations that Matt and Laura are looking at, I think it's worth this gamble, because Matt, in particular, should be laughing here. It comes with three acres of land. So plenty for all of his sheep. But before the mystery property, our search is taking us to the village of Old Newton. Close by is the ancient village of Hawley, the market for which was once an important and historical hub for the area until a great fire in the 1500s destroyed much of the village and brought about the end of the market, which was then moved to nearby Stone Market. Today, there are still a range of amenities. And one and a half miles away, just around the corner from the nearest primary school, our offering can be found in the heart of the community. Now then, you might not guess it quite yet, but this is actually a barn conversion. Right. What do we think? I really like it. I really I like it too. You like the position? I do. You need a 10 minute drive from Stowe Market, so good yeah. train access back into London. Mm -hmm. I think you're going to like this place. Okay. Right. Let's go inside. Formerly a Victorian threshing barn built in 1847, this property has phenomenal proportions and certainly isn't shy of space. Sympathetically converted in 2003, it's also been refurbished since by the current owners. So, this could be a really nice light reception all there, with those blinds taken up. But take a look at this. Oh, yes, I, wow. like, I like that. That is a fireplace. That is a fireplace. That's fantastic. That's pretty special. Uh-huh. What a room. Christmas. Can you imagine it in this house? Yes. Look at this room. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm already decorating the room. We could have the whole extended family of Christmas here. We've got stockings over the fireplace. <laughs> <laughs> so, big enough, isn't it? it certainly is, yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay, let's keep looking around. Fantastic. Just wanted to have a quick peek into here, because I thought... Christmas dinner? Yes. Oh, yeah. It's cosy in here, isn't it? It's lovely. Just using the whole family in here gathered around the table. Yeah. yeah. It's a great, great formal dining room. Doesn't it, it just? Yeah. Mm. But you've got space in the kitchen as well. Let me show you. Also on the ground floor, there's a study which could provide either a playroom for the girls or a further guest room for family. Mind you step on the way down here. Okay. Now. Wow. This is nice. Every time you turn a corner on this place, it just gets better, doesn't it? Good. I'm glad you said that. And bigger. Just space. Lots and lots of space. And beyond there, you've got yeah. a utility room and a downstairs loo. Yeah. Sorted. <laughs> Sorted. <laughs> Let's go upstairs. Okay. Come away. Up past this vast vaulted hallway on the first floor, there are four double bedrooms, two of which benefit from en suites, plus there's a family bathroom. 
Come on, Mr. Bertram. Just keeps delivering this place, doesn't it? It does. Wow. And I'm guessing through that door there, there's um, en suite. Yeah, I like this bedroom a lot. It's, um, just the sense of space and light and um, mm. it's just... The high ceilings. Yeah. We really like high ceilings, don't we? That's exactly what we're looking for. Mm-hmm. Good. Mm. Well, you've reacted really, really well. I wonder if your prices are going to reflect your reactions. <laughs> Let's go outside and have a chat. So far, so good. However, whilst the well-manicured garden here completely envelops the property, there's only 0.4 of an acre of land, so I'm hoping that won't dampen their spirits. Now then, you can see you've got these different segments of the garden again, but like yesterday afternoon. Yes. Yeah. You like it? It's really nicely done. I really like it. You've got like the play area for the girls and then the party entertainment area exactly. for us. So, come on then, tell me. How much do you think this house is on the market for? I think you've been a bit mean to us, Johnny, and I think you've gone right to the top, if not a little bit over our budget. So I'm, I'm thinking around the £610,000 mark. All right. I'd say 600 Definitely top end. Well, this place is on the market for offers around £550,000. Wow. Wow. No way. No way. <laughs> Yeah. I'm shocked. It's a good shot. It's on budget. That's a lot of house for the money. Yeah. Yeah. I think the house has absolutely blown us away. And I think with the quality of the house and the, the space that the house offers, um, the compromise in the land is one that we could, we, I could easily make. But also, I think because there's a field next door, it gives you that sense of space. Yeah, it throws the eye, certainly. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Well, look, go back into the house. Have a good look around it. You know what I'm going to ask you to do? Start comparing this place with what you've seen before now. Mm. And I will meet you outside. OK? OK. Great. See you Thank tomorrow. You. Well, fantastic house tour. Make no mistake about it. And the fact that Matt's now prepared to maybe consider buying a place without any land, well, it's great news. I've got one more property to see. Just under the top of their budget, this modern barn conversion beautifully retains a sense of its heritage. There are four bedrooms plus more than enough living space for their growing girls to enjoy and to accommodate visiting family. It sits on the edge of a village and is blessed with countryside views. Walking into the first reception room, um, I don't think I've ever been in a room so big in a house in the UK. It's, uh, it's just amazing. The living space in this house would so suit our needs as a family. There's big spaces um, and plenty of room for us to grow. This is a perfect little girl bedroom, isn't it? Isn't it? When I think about a country property that we, we would move to, you know, this, this pretty much is it. And, you know, it delivers on everything we're asking for, space, a bit of character with the beams. Um, it's, it's just everything we were looking for. The house itself is beautiful. It's got beautiful features. It's beautifully decorated. It's my dream home. Now then. I think it's fair to say we all enjoyed looking around that house, didn't we? Yes. Yes. Did we potentially look around your new home? Yes. Oh, <laughs> straight in. But, yourself? I think we're, we're both quite keen on the property. We are. Well, we've got one more property to have a look at. So let's go on the way. For our mystery property, we're visiting the village of Ofton. Close by is the village of Somersham, which, with a good sprinkling of old traditional buildings, there's a tight-knit community who run the village shop. There's also a local primary school, which would be handy for Laura and Matt's girls. From here, it's just two and a half miles to our next property, which has a stunning rural setting. Now, the mystery house is this. OK. What's going through your mind? That my daughter, Sophie, would absolutely love it. Oh, why so? It's pink. Oh, OK, well, <laughs> all right. Suffolk pink, it, it is. is. Pink. Yes. Very traditional. With lots of pargeting on the facade and the rear as well. Mm. I think it's very pretty. The house looks quite small from the outside. Mm. Hoping it will be so bigger I'm inside. I'm imagining it's probably got something large that comes with it. It has indeed. Come with me. 
steeped in history dating back to the 17th century, this Grade 2 listed cottage spent its former years as a pub, which closed in 1907. Lovingly restored by the current owners, it includes a host of period features. So there's a small pantry through that door there. Okay. Straight into the kitchen. Mm-hmm. Mind your head. Yeah. <laughs> She's cosy, isn't it? Yeah. Cosy. Cosy. And small. Oh, really? Come through with me. <laughs> <laughs> Give it a chance. <laughs> okay. A lot of history in here, isn't there? Yeah. I love it, it's very pretty, but um, for our family living, this is too small. I think I'm going to have to agree with Laura on that one. It is exceptionally lovely, but I think it's just a little bit... Not combining both these places, though? No? Yeah. You've got a separate dining room next door? Okay. Well, let's, let's, see, let's keep an open mind and see the rest of it and okay. see, see how that pans out. All right, do that. Now, this dining room, if you like open fires, you'll be impressed. Oh, Look at that. Wow, that's lovely. You can picture yeah. family dinners in here. Nice and cosy in the winter by the fire, can't you? I think the reception you'd use is just this way. OK, so the dedicated adult's room, I think. Nice and cosy in here, isn't it? Yeah. Whoever's renovated it's done an absolute fantastic job mm. of uh, stripping all the wood back and yeah. making it look been, really pretty. Yeah, beautifully done. But we're not really talking about being a home, are we? That I says everything. I don't think it would suit us as a family and a growing family at that. Mm. Well, as you know, the Mystery House is all about a gamble and compromise sometimes. So mm. we thought you may be pushed a little bit internally as regards to family size, mm -hmm. of course. Mm -hmm. yeah. But we chose it because it gives you something that you haven't yet seen, and that's lots of outside space. Mm. But before we go out there and have a look around the land, sure. let's have a quick pick at the bedroom. Great. On the ground floor, there's a further reception room, which could be a fourth bedroom and a family bathroom. Upstairs, there are three double bedrooms and a shower room. We're heading for the master. And... Creaky bedroom. <laughs> I love that. Look at those beautiful floorboards. They are, aren't they? They are. There'd be no sneaking in at night, though, would there? <laughs> no, not really, no. <laughs> it is lovely. I think it's a beautiful house. Absolutely stunning. I think we both do. But yes. in terms of the, the space aspect that we're really craving, hence, yes. hence our move out of the city, mm. um, it's, it's not got it. Maybe this house can give you the space outside as opposed to inside. Maybe. Yes. Come with me. The land is the real selling point of this country cottage, with veggie plot and stunning views. There's over three and a half acres here, and I'm hoping this time Matt will be happy with his lot. Now, the man wanted land. Satisfied? It's a good lump of land, isn't, isn't it? it? Yeah. Cracking view from yeah. up here, isn't it? I think coming here and, and seeing you know, the land and, and what you get in terms of a house for the, for the price, and the compromise you have to make between the two, um, I'm swayed more towards the house being the focal point rather than the land. So, how much do you think it's on the market for? I'm thinking around the 450,000 mark. Okay. I'd say 500. Ooh, quite a spread. Yeah. yeah. And it's split the camp because this place is on the market for offers around 475,000 okay. pounds. I feel like the mystery house, on this occasion, has been an exercise in flushing things out. Maybe you've already seen a property you like more and it helps make your mind up. So, just have a quick scoot around on your way out and I'll meet you whenever you're ready, okay? Okay. Right. See you in a bit. £75,000 under the top end of Laura and Matt's budget, this pretty pink cottage offers the character they are after. A substantial amount of land that Matt has always dreamt of and the village location they hoped for. However, the property itself just wasn't big enough to accommodate the needs of their family. So the Mystery House is a beautiful little cottage, but probably just not right for us. The house was very lovingly restored, but the rooms felt very small and the ceilings were low. We have two young, very energetic children who need space to grow and to run. And I just feel that this cottage would be too small for them to be able to do that. It's helped me realise that the land that I was 
longing for is possibly not as necessary as, as what I thought it was. The best move for us would be to spend the extra money and sell our house in Stevenage so that we could, we could perhaps buy a bigger place over here and get exactly what we want. So, that's it. Yes. No more houses? No. Maybe we found you something you already like. Hopefully so. Let me take you somewhere and have a bit of a chat and then I'll catch up with you after that. How's okay, that? yeah. Fantastic. Just outside the Suffolk coastal village of Orford sits the three mile long Butley Creek, a small tributary to the River Ore, and a breeding ground for oysters which had been farmed here since Roman times. By the early 20th century, the trade had almost completely died away. That is, until the 1950s, when Richard Pinney, a Londoner keen to make his own escape to the country, heard of this rich oyster heritage and reintroduced oysters to the creek. Three generations later, and Bill Penny is still working the oyster beds. So I've come to meet him to find out a little more about this age-old tradition and, of course, the delicious Butley oyster itself. Bill, thanks very much for seeing me this morning. First of all, how would you describe what you do here? Well, we're oyster farming. Right. Uh, we buy the oysters as very small seed and grow them all the way through. It's so on the river, on the surface to start with, in, in small mesh bags, and then yeah. when they get big enough, we put them on the bottom where they grow much more slowly, but they grow into a better oyster. So have you been out yet today? Not yet, no. No, now's the time. We'll Should go. we go? Yeah. Good man. Having been introduced to Europe's shores around 40 years ago, the deep shell oysters here are originally native to Japan. And with Butley Creek being tidal, the mixture of fresh water, salinity and natural plankton provides optimum conditions for the growth of around 50,000 of these oysters each year. So these are the ones you're growing, Bill? Yeah, these are the baby oysters that are getting big enough to go onto the ground. So I'll show you. These are very, very small, these ones. So how long have these been in here? Yeah, we've had them six months. And when you put them in here, how big would they have been? Um, well, they, they were absolutely tiny. I mean, they were, they were just, just like the tip, tip of the oyster there. Wow. They were, they were that, that small. These ones are getting near the end, probably in another Three or four weeks, they'll be big enough to go on the bottom. Quite close to it, yeah. yeah. Can we have a go at dredging someone that have been there? Yes, I'll take you onto a bed where they've been down now for about six or eight months, and you'll, okay. you'll see the difference in growth. Right. The oysters in these beds can be harvested all year round, using traditional methods which have barely changed over the last 2,000 years. Towed behind the boat, the heavy-framed dredge scrapes the oysters off the riverbed and catches them in a net-like bag before it's then pulled in by hand. Got a good feeling about this one, Bill. Yeah, we'll get a bag full. Hold it in then. See what you got. Pull it in. This one. That's right. Feels heavier. Here we go. Moment of truth. That's it. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's good. You've got half, half a dredge full. Pull them in. Look at the size. <laughs> wow! Yeah. Well, this is more than six months old, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's probably, that's, that must be 20 years old, I should think. That's the size you would normally eat. Well, what are you going to do with that? Well, we'll use it for oyster soup. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. After being dredged, the oysters are washed and purified before they're ready to eat. And having worked up an appetite on the water, I'm itching to try one. But first, I've got to get past that shell. So how do you open one? Because it looks difficult. There is a knack. In, in at that end, yeah. Under the hinge, have a little wiggle. A little pressure, keep wriggling until you feel it pop in. Keep going. That's it, you got it, you got it. Right. And then just slide along the top shell and cut. Cut the muscle. Go in that way, and you'll feel that top muscle give. That's it, you've got it. Plump little oyster in there. You're now going to cut underneath that muscle. You slide the knife underneath the muscle there, and then it's free from the shell. That's ready to go. How do you prefer to eat them? Well, most of our oysters are just eaten raw. So we're going to put a little bit of lemon and a sprinkle of red pepper, perhaps. So... Like most fresh things, the simpler the better, isn't it? Exactly. Your fork. Thank you, sir. Mmm. That is gorgeous. Yeah. That is yeah. absolutely gorgeous. Well, I must yeah. say, Bill, yeah. it's, it's not the quickest 
form of farming, but it's certainly one of the tastiest. Thank you very, very much. It's been fascinating today. It's a pleasure. Best of luck for the future. Thank you. Well, it's pretty clear that the barn conversion in the village is Matt and Laura's favourite property. But after a bit of time to think and consider things, has it done enough to quash Matt's dream of a property with land and indeed tempt Laura away from her family and friends in Stevenage? Let's catch up with them and find out. So, your favourite house? It's got to be the barn conversion in the village. Definitely. Yeah. What set it apart? The lounge was just fantastic with the fireplace. You couldn't fail to be sort of impressed no. when you walked into that, that space. Yeah, and the fact that you walk through the house and it just gets better and better. Yeah, quite. So, As did your reactions. Yeah. Now, from my perspective, this looked like a two-horse race between the semi-timber cloud barn conversion and the one we saw in the village. The outside space at the village barn conversion worked much better. Yeah. It wrapped around the house a bit better. And the fact that it was right next to fields and had a beautiful vista over the fields as well even if we didn't own them. Now, Matt, for you, one of the big factors was land. Now, this barn conversion doesn't have a lot of it. Has the house done enough for you? I think so. The, the house blew us away, and that more than makes up for the... Well, it's, it's still got a reasonable amount of land. It's yeah. still 0.4 of an acre, which is, you know, not to be sneezed at. To sacrifice the wide-open fields that I'd envisaged, um, which are admittedly right next door to the property also. Yeah, quite. So, um, yeah, no, it's... Yeah. It's a perfect compromise for us. So, what's the next step for you? I think we need to take a bigger look at the area. Just, just find out what the schools are like. Maybe look at the house again, just with a, with a sort of a, in a, another day with a fresh set of eyes. Yeah, why not? Do let me know what happens next, won't you? We will. Good. Absolutely. Well, good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, it's been great showing Matt and Laura around those fantastic properties. But what I've really enjoyed is seeing them both compromise on what they individually want in order to get what's best for their entire family in the long term. And I think with that barn conversion, they're achieving just that. Now, of course, by their own admission, they don't know this part of Suffolk particularly well, so I totally understand why they want to come back up here. And in particular, look around that primary school for their two young daughters. And if all that goes well, then maybe the entire family will be making a more permanent move up here to Suffolk very soon. See you next time. If you'd like to escape to the country in England, Scotland, Wales or Northern Ireland and would like our help, you can apply online at bbc.co.uk forward slash be on a show. তো এটা তিন বিঘার একটা পুকুর এই মথুরাপুর এই জায়গার নাম নহটা থেকে একটু সামনে সব সালে পাওয়ার আগে সূর্যপুর পাওয়ার আগে নহটা থেকে দুই কিলো সামনে মথুরাপুর এখানে শিকারি ডেকে ডাকা হয়েছে এবং জাল টানা চলছে মাছ দেখানোর জন্য জাল প্রাণী কোথায় চলে আসছে
তো কিছু বড় কাতল কিন্তু ওনারা দেখাচ্ছে এই যে বড় কাতলগুলো কিন্তু দেখাচ্ছে তো চারদিকে কিন্তু গাছ গাছ কাটে গাছের শীতের আছে তো মাছ নিয়ে আসা বড় কঠিন কিছু দর্শক আছে ওনারা কিন্তু মাছ দেখছে তো ওনারা কিন্তু বড় মাছগুলো ধরে ধরে দেখাচ্ছেন আমি যতটুকু জেনেছি যে ওনারা বলছেন যে এখানে আটশো গ্রামের নিচে কোনো মাছ নেই রুই মেগেলগুলো সর্বনিম্ন আটশো গ্রাম উপরে আছে দু আড়াই কেজি পর্যন্ত এই যে মেগেল আর বেশ মেগেল আসছে সাধারণত মেগেল তো জালে আসে না কিন্তু অনেকগুলো মেগেল আসতে যেতে হয়েছে আর এবং সবগুলোই আমার কাছে মনে হচ্ছে এক কেজি সাইজ হবে আরে আরে একটা দিন আসছে